Do you have a family member that has to argue with you about every little thing? Or maybe you have one that was born toxic and they're probably gonna die that way. My life could literally be a lifetime movie and so I feel like I'm qualified to talk about how to survive the holiday season with toxic family members. We're talking about setting boundaries, communicating, how to get through it with your sanity intact. What's up you guys? My name is Grace Tori and I am here with a brand new podcast episode. Happy December 1st. If you are in the US, I'm hoping that your Thanksgiving was great. But if you're listening or watching to this, you may have had a toxic family member or you just wanna avoid it if the situation ever comes up or it's a family friend, whatever it may be, I got you. So I have had a, a family member or two that I've had to go no contact with, set boundaries with, all of the things I'm gonna talk about. So I thought that I would be qualified to talk about this. I know that for some holidays are the best time of the year. You're so excited, you love spending time with family. But for others, especially in 2024, especially with it being an election year, this year's been tough. Family members are hard. Being around family for extended periods amount of time may not be your favorite. So. I'm breaking it all down. We're gonna talk about it. This is in no way in any specific order. This is just kind of like a brand up of all of the tips and tricks that I have. Kind of give you examples of how to set boundaries, what those boundaries may be, examples of things that I've done. And it's just like a master guide to get through the holidays with family members that don't agree with you or have it out for you or hate you because blood is not thicker than water. That's a little tidbit we'll get into eventually, but. Yeah, that is pretty much it. Before I jump in, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all those things. It takes about 0.2 seconds and means the world to me. It blows up the podcast. All the things. If you're someone who's highly ambitious and looking for another community of women who are growing together and feel lost but want to talk about it with someone, then you're in the right community. We're all super ambitious. We're all trying to figure out what that thing is that we want to do. We really want to get there, but we don't really know exactly what that point is. Or you have that point in mind. You're just like, man, I don't have anybody on my side to help me talk it through. So that's where we come in. So if you're, you're ambitious, you need some advice, you want some girlies that understand that's us. So definitely be sure to check out the community by Instagram, Spotify, all the things. And on YouTube, I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by 2025 and I think we can do it. So take a second and subscribe if you aren't already. I'm waiting. Okay, enough about that. That was kind of a lot. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump on in. I'm Grace Tori and you're listening to That Girl The Podcast. Grab a beverage of choice and settle in, because the new episode is starting now. So I want to start by being very, very clear and saying that going no contact with your family member, friend, whoever it is, is not the goal. That is not what we're trying to do here. That's your last resort. We're trying to put things in place, boundaries, set the president before it gets to that point, because going no contact is not fun, it's not great, and I personally don't enjoy it. It's just literally like a last resort if nothing else works. The next thing that I want to say is communication is key. Like communicate, communicate, communicate. I think that in all aspects of life, whether it's in your job, your friendships, your relationships, communication and honesty are number one. And don't communicate from a place of being very defensive. Seek to understand. And I'm not saying that you are wrong by any means. Your family member could and probably is saying something totally off the wall that you do not believe in, you don't stand by. But look at it from a different point of view and seek to understand. Don't come at it from a defensive place. Come from a place of curiosity and compassion and come at it from a kind place. You never want to meet hostility with more hostility. You want to meet it with compassion and kindness. So just seek to understand. Be communicative and listen and Try to understand where they're coming from, even if you yourself could never come from that place. Try to understand where they're coming from. Reiterate what your original point was or the point of contention, whatever it may be. When you're having this discussion, reiterate it in a calm tone. You're, you're rising above. You're not yelling, you're not shouting, you, you're not having that defensive tone, you're not being argumentative. You're calm, poised, collected, okay? You have to be calm. That is a big part of this, is you're coming at this from a place of poise and grace. You cannot get on their level. I have a rule, and it's very, very clear. It's a boundary that I've set with everyone in my family, and this rule is like my lifeline. 
and it's the tell me once rule. I made that up, but it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. You can tell me your opinion once. If you disagree with something I'm doing, that's fine. Tell me once. That doesn't mean yell at me. That doesn't mean shout at me. That doesn't mean tell me I'm stupid. That means you can voice your concern one time. Tell me whatever. Tell me your reasons. Tell me all the things one time. And I will hear you out. I will listen to your reasons and I'll, I'll be understanding. After that one time, do not tell me a hundred more times. I don't want to hear that you disagree. I don't want to hear that you think I'm going down a bad path. I don't want to hear that I'm a terrible person like because I made a certain choice. Tell me once. We'll have the discussion. Maybe you'll convince me. Maybe we'll agree to disagree. More often than not, I agree to disagree. But after that one time, I don't want to hear about it again. This rule has saved me so many times because it puts that boundary there that helps my family understand that I'm not discrediting them and I'm happy to hear them out and I'm I'm very very fortunate that they care about me and I want to hear their concerns but they can't tell me them over and over they can't walk all over me they can't come from a place of hostility it has to be a adult discussion one time that's it look at your relationship with this person from a bird's eye view I think that Often we get very emotional. I'm an extremely emotional person and I look at it from a place of emotion and I'm like, why would they say this to me? They hurt my feelings, da 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 When you are considering things like cutting someone out of your life and making big decisions, you know, how should I proceed with boundaries, communication, things like that, it's important to also be logical. So look at it from a bird, bird's eye view. Be very, very objective and look at it as if neither of you like you are an unbiased third party and you think okay well oftentimes when you do this you start to think okay well they said this because in their own weird way they care about me and they care because they were raised this way and they don't have the experience that I have so you, you get very detached from it when you look at it from a bird's eye view and even though it's not going to change your mind more often than not it's going to give you a better understanding of where they're coming from and that can help you decide where to go from there because if they're coming intent is everything if they're coming from a place of malice and you're looking at it from a bird's eye view you can be like oh yeah they're definitely doing this to hurt me but if you're looking at it and you start to realize oh wait this is more about how they were raised or they're projecting on me and this has nothing to do with me then you start to look at it from a different place more of a place of compassion and understanding and again you still shouldn't let them walk all over you but you have a better place to make decisions from because you have a better understanding of where they're coming from when you come up with a plan and i'll get into different types of boundaries and things that you can do but when you come up with this plan of how you're going to proceed with this family member communication boundaries whatever it may be you should explain it to them before you implement it this can come across as hey this makes me uncomfortable and if you continue to do this i'm gonna have to start implementing this boundary or it can come across as hey you've done this and it's made me uncomfortable for these reasons i think it's wrong for these reasons so now i will be implementing this boundary whatever it is come up with a plan and make sure that you have it in mind before you have this discussion with them so that you're not going into it blind have a plan and stick to it because you're gonna probably get emotional during the conversation but you want to make sure that the plan you come up with was made when you are away from the situation you've had time to be a little bit more logical and come at it from a different angle versus in the moment apologize when necessary there have been conversations that i've had where i have gotten out of hand and i've said things that i didn't mean i've said things that were hurtful and that doesn't mean that i wasn't right or that doesn't mean that they weren't right like that doesn't have anything to do with the overarching problems in the conversation but i have said like hey i don't agree with this and i still don't agree with you but i'm sorry that i said some hurtful things and i didn't mean that i'm apologize for that and that's just one example of things that you may need to apologize for don't stoop to their level don't get mean don't say things you don't mean don't be aggressive and apologize when necessary. Nobody's perfect. You may have said things you don't mean. You may have realized that you were wrong. Maybe you realized that they were right the whole time. Like, I'm not saying that it's impossible. That definitely could happen. So 
be willing to apologize when necessary. Remember that life is short and ask yourself if the disagreement warrants the response that you are giving it. I oftentimes have had a certain response that has been very, very emotional because again, I'm an emotional person. And then when I've had a few days to think it over, I thought to myself, wait, this is not as big as I thought it was. And life is short. Some of the family members you have may be older. They may not have forever left with you. And you kind of have to say to yourself, like, is this something that I'm willing to lose this relationship over? Because life is short. Like, we're not going to be here forever. Do I really want to lose this relationship over this disagreement? Or would I rather just set boundaries? Would I rather just let it go and be the bigger person? Like, I'm not saying to be a people pleaser by any means. I'm a recovering people pleaser. Don't avoid confrontation. But if there's more reasons than simply, I don't want to have this conversation, then it's worth asking yourself, like, is this disagreement big enough that it warrants the response that I'm giving it? Or am I just being emotional? Like I said, do not make any decisions in the moment when it happens. Take some time to cool off. This is something that took me a while to learn. I... If I'm upset, if you say something that hurts me, if you say something that bothers me, angers me, I'm not going to respond to you in that moment. I'm going to excuse myself and then maybe a day or two I will come back to it because every single time I've said something in that moment, I've said and made decisions I didn't mean from a place of emotion. So it's really important to not make decisions in the moment. Whether you're extremely emotional, whether you believe you're not extremely emotional, whether you're actually not, Give it a day or two to cool off and actually look at it from a point of view of you've stepped back a little bit and you're not as close to the situation. My mom taught me this when I was like 19 and in college and trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And I have taken it with me everywhere and it's so important to me. I've said it on the podcast before and that is it's okay to be a little selfish. And what I mean by that is selfishness to selflessness is a spectrum you aren't automatically super selfish because you do one thing and you're not super selfless because you do one thing and it's a spectrum and sometimes you're gonna need to lean more one way than the other i think that a lot of people confuse selfishness with self-preservation sometimes you have to make decisions that have you in mind at the top of priority in order to preserve yourself like i know a lot of people that will hurt themselves for the sake of others to not be selfish but there's a way for you to preserve yourself and not be selfish like not hurt other people in the process there's a way where everybody can figure it out like you don't always have to fall on your sword so that everybody else is comfortable and everybody else is happy you need to have a certain level of selfishness so that you're willing to set boundaries and you're willing to self-preserve and you're willing to have tough communication sometimes because conversations are going to be hard they're not always going to be easy confrontation is going to be a thing and you're just going to have to do it even if you don't want to so Selfishness is a spectrum. Don't lose your self-preservation for the sake of everybody else. One thing I have learned is don't share things that you know your family's going to judge you for or not understand. I have certain things that I don't talk about with certain members of my family simply because I know they won't understand it and I know that it's going to cause problems and I know that they're going to judge me and I know that it's going to make me feel uncomfortable. So I share it but not with certain family members. So you can still tell people everything. I'm very close with my mom. My mom and I are like best friends. I tell her more than I tell anybody else in my family because I know that she's not going to judge me. I'm not going to be uncomfortable. But there are certain things that I keep from certain members of my family just to keep the peace. And that's fine. You don't have to tell everybody everything about you. It's better that way, honestly, because you have some sort of sanity like you keep things to yourself. So it's okay not to share everything with everybody. Know your self-worth and have respect for yourself. Blood is not thicker than water. If it comes to the point where you're being disrespected, your self-worth is being constantly questioned, they're putting doubt in your head, there's an issue. And a lot of times, this has really been a game changer for me is realizing this, a lot of times people are projecting their own issues onto you, their own insecurities about themselves. Maybe they're insecure about 
their weight and so they call you fat because they're jealous of how you look that is just one example but people tend to project on to others when they're jealous or they are uncomfortable with things they're doing they are projecting so understand that it has nothing to do with your self-worth and who you are and everything to do with their own dislike for themselves so know your worth and respect and be willing to draw a line in the sand because that is all about you and you need to protect yourself and your self-esteem and again like it's not that serious usually it's about them the excuses of their family or that's just the way they are are not valid those aren't excuses okay so some people they may be but to you they're not let me tell you something very, very important. Are you listening? You may want to write this down. Excuses and reasons are two different things. There can be a reason for the way that someone is acting the way they are, but it's not an excuse. So they were raised in a different time is a valid reason. There are so many different things that our grandparents were taught differently than us. That doesn't mean it's right. It just means that they were taught that way. And that is a reason for why they are acting the way they are. However, that is not an excuse because they should have educated themselves or you can be the one to educate them in a kind way. Like there are so many ways that they could have changed this. So it's a reason, it's not an excuse. Know the difference. I've had to really lay down the law with this one because people have said to me, oh, that's just the way they are. That's just how they are, Grace. Grace, they're not gonna change, that's just how they are. No. That's not an excuse, that's a reason, but that shouldn't be a way for you to excuse their behavior. You should have helped them to change and grow as a person. Do not drag other family members into it. I know that having that conversation I just had is kind of like counter the opposite of this, um, but don't bring other family members into it. If they ask you about it, you can say like, oh, we had a disagreement, but you know, we're working through it or something like that. Say whatever you need to say to keep it brief and move on to the next topic. But don't just be gossiping with family members because then it becomes you against them and people are inevitably going to pick sides and then it just becomes an all-out war and the drama is not necessary. It's not needed. You are trying to protect your peace. You are not trying to build the drama, okay? We have to be in a state of mind where we're thinking about our peace and preserving that versus drama and toxicity and things like that. So you're coming at it from a place of, we're gonna squash this and I'm gonna protect my peace and my happiness and not, how much drama can I make? And I want them to be on my side and I need to build allies. No, squash it. We're protecting peace. Discuss issues one-on-one -on -one in person. You don't need other family members there. Maybe sometimes my mom has been there to be a mediator because she is the peacekeeper. She wants peace, she hates confrontation. There has been times where I've had her as a mediator because She's good at that, but aside from having someone there to benefit you and mediate, do it one-on-one -on -one and do it in person. Things can get misread, misunderstood over text. Phone calls are just not my thing. If it's possible for you to do it in person, do it in person. If not, I would do a phone call, but one-on-one -on -one in person is the best way to do it. Do not let one family member or multiple family members' toxicity and projection ruin your holiday. Make sure that you have a plan B in place if you're going into it knowing that they are prone to do these types of things and have some affirmations to calm yourself when things get rough, to remind yourself. Maybe it's, I am confident about myself and my future. I am confident about who I am. Things like that that you know to be true about yourself that reaffirm who you are and what you believe and kind of just counter what they're saying. So have those affirmations ready and if things get too rough, make sure you have a plan B. Maybe have a friend's house that you can go to if you need to and you're like at home visiting family. Like have certain plan Bs that you can implement in the event that things get crazy. I mentioned having a plan. Know what boundaries you want to set before having the conversation. I mentioned that with the plan, so jump the gun a little bit, but know those boundaries before you have that ultimate conversation. Here are some examples of boundaries. There are much more, but these are just the ones I thought of off the top of my head. First one is topics that are off limits to discuss. Maybe there's certain things that cause issues within your family, so you just 
agree to disagree and say we are not going to talk about these topics. I love you, but we're not going to see eye to eye. So if it comes down to politics or religion or things like that, we're not going to discuss it. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's your relationship. Like those things, it's okay to say, hey, these are off limits for the sake of our relationship. I care about you and I don't want us to have a problem and we're not going to see eye to eye on this. So we're going to agree to disagree and not talk about it. Certain dates or times that you're not available to talk. I let my family know that I'm probably not going to answer if it's past nine o'clock at night because that's like my time to unwind and that's my self care time. And that's my time with Josh and my animals. Like I'm not going to answer you. If you have an emergency, yes, reach out, but they know not to reach out and just like have a conversation and get upset if I don't respond. Like if they reach out and I don't respond until later, like that's fine. I don't care. But if you're reaching out and you're getting upset that I don't immediately answer, don't because I set that boundary and it's, not an emergency so I love you I appreciate you but this is my time maybe for you that's Saturdays and Sundays maybe for you that's your off day maybe for you that's nighttime or morning when you're doing your meditation let them know that certain dates or times you can't talk to them I mentioned it a couple times earlier but agree to disagree is a phrase that you're probably going to use a lot don't discuss certain topics over text like maybe there's a topic that just gets you heated and you're fine to talk about it in person but things get misunderstood over text so maybe it's something that you say i would appreciate if we only talked about this in person so having different places where you talk about certain things like maybe you don't talk about certain things over the phone maybe you only talk about certain things over the phone like there's certain things that you can set boundaries for if you are no contact with a family member, have a plan and set that boundary when you're at events that they're gonna be at. So maybe I'm going to my mom's house and I'm no contact with someone who is also going. Have boundaries set for yourself. And if it is a family member that you trust that's hosting it, maybe saying like, hey, I love you, I appreciate you, um, but this is what I'll be doing to maintain this boundary that I set with this person. have monetary or time allocation set aside for events. So maybe you're the person who brings presents to the kids or decorates for events or is always showing up. Have boundaries to that so that people don't take advantage if they're known to. Say, you know, I can spend this much on decorations. I can give this much in gifts. I can spend this much time helping you decorate. Have boundaries set ahead of time. There are different types of boundary when it comes to communication. There's no contact, which is the biggest one. There's minimal contact. And there's one that I like to implement quite a bit when things get a little too aggressive for me or there's a lot of toxicity or there's just drama that I'm waiting to kind of simmer down. And that's what I like to call arm's length. So we reach out to each other every so often. We talk very casually, weather, how's your job, you know, what are you doing for Christmas? Like very, very minimal. And that's like what I like to call arm's length. Like you're still in my life. I still care about you, but I'm not talking to you every day. I'm not telling you things about my life that I know you're going to judge me for. I'm keeping you at arm's length because I care about you. And this is the only way we can have a relationship because you're crossing the boundaries I set. Have social media boundaries. Maybe there's certain family members you don't allow on your social media. Maybe you mute them. Maybe you don't like seeing their social media. Like have boundaries when it comes to your socials. Moving on from some examples that I gave you. I hope that you guys got some use out of that. Maybe you can come up with your own boundaries based on that or they're applicable to certain situations that you can think of. Um, the goal of this all, of the entire thing, is to create boundaries, create communication, have the ability to set up a mutually beneficial loving if possible relationship you want both of you to leave your conversations your relationship whatever whenever you interact feeling good and feeling like you benefited from it in some way loving is a stretch i know some of you are like i hate my aunt and i'll never love her and that's fine but you're setting boundaries to hopefully heal that relationship or be able to bear it when you go to family events so it needs to be beneficial it needs to be loving ideally and that is kind of what you're striving for to keep you to keep your eye on the prize that's like what you want to 
set your mind towards so that when you set boundaries you say my goal is to have this type of relationship and these are the boundaries that are going to get there remember as a people pleaser that implementing boundaries is being kind to you and the other family member because you're preventing further issues from happening you're not the bad guy for saying, hey, I can't do things at this time, or hey, maybe we don't talk about this. Hey, what you said hurt my feelings, and here's what we're going to do to fix it. You're not the bad guy for that. I know you feel like you are to have to initiate confrontation, but you're not, okay? It is kind to you and them, and it's going to help you down the road. It's the right thing to do. It's what's going to help you. Remember, as you are probably an adult, I'm guessing if you're listening to this, you're an adult, you create your holiday plans, so make plans that are best for you. If you know that mentally you're not able to handle things, don't go. Set a time limit. Make other plans. Have an escape plan. I know there was a time when I was really struggling with my identity, and I felt like my family was really imposing a lot of ideas and beliefs on my identity at the time, and I just needed my own space. And I drove the hour and a half to dinner for Christmas, and then I drove home an hour and a half in a snowstorm and I could have spent the night but I didn't because I knew that mentally I would be better off to just go back home and it was a great decision. I'm still glad I did that because it gave me the space to have my own little mental things and I still got to see my family. It was a good visit. Things didn't get aggressive. It was just dinner. What are you thankful for? Merry Christmas. And then I was sent on my way and that was fine. It's a lot easier to miss someone when you're not constantly around them. And sometimes spending a week with them is just way too long. So set boundaries that are going to help you and be beneficial to you because you're an adult and ultimately you make your holiday plans. It's okay to be a little selfish. Remember that we all change and grow as time passes. You're going to gain wisdom. You're going to learn new things. You're going to change as a person. Your morals are going to change. But not everybody does that at the same speed. So your grandfather may be behind compared to you. Maybe you're in an environment, if you're in college or things like that, where you're being constantly shown new ideas, ways of thinking, knowledge, and that's changing your, your growth, you're growing. They may not be in that situation, so they may not grow as fast as you, which means that you're going to have these new ideas and these new emotional abilities and you're going to have stronger emotional intelligence and they may not be where you're at and that's okay you have to accept that and meet them where they're at have the compassion to understand that they may not be there and that doesn't mean that they're right that doesn't mean that they're not saying horrible or disrespectful things that just means that you understand where they're coming from you understand the reason behind it it's all coming together therefore you can create a plan based on that the last thing I'm going to say is to approach this with love and light, always. No hostility, no anger, no defensiveness. You are coming from a place of understanding, compassion, love, and light. You are above all of that negativity. You want to give them love and light and move on. Wish them love and light and move on. Sometimes that is going no contact and then wishing them love and light and moving on. You keep your side of the street clean. Okay, karma? Yes. That's it. <laughs> I hope that I gave you some sort of help or advice and you are able to go through the rest of the holidays with some sort of plan in mind, some sort of ease because you have an inner ability to understand your worth and understand that what they're saying is separate from who you are and they're saying things from a place of protection or misunderstanding or growth being at a different level. I love you so much. Let me know if this was helpful to you because I really want to know. This is a little different than anything I've done. I don't think I've gotten this personal and talked about something so personal to me. So I hope that it does make a difference. And yeah, we're going to have the best month. Let's finish the last of 2024 strong. I'm going to come out with my December vision board. I'm going to be coming out with videos of how to plan for next year. So if you're interested in any of that, don't forget to follow, subscribe, whatever the word is for you. If you are following before I hit 1k, which we're hoping to do this month, 
um, on YouTube, then don't forget to comment hashtag gal with goals so I know that you're an OG and a real one. And I'll be responding to everybody like always. So don't forget to leave a message. Also on Spotify, you guys can comment. I see you. Don't forget to comment. Um, but that's it. So I'll see you guys in my next podcast episode. I love you so, so much. And yeah, happy December. Bye, guys.